Growing up with rather bad male role models, I always questioned masculinity. And you look at your, you know, look at one of your programs, one of the news programs. What is it? Men behaving badly. Most of the troubles of the world are men's business. Yeah. And, and so, you know, masculinity is mainly conditioning. It's not innate. Mm. And so, I th I'm just trying to bring awareness to what it is masculinity, and then maybe say we could change it. And it mm, might be better mm. off for you, because half the victims mm. of masculinity are men. Was uh, your overall view of men one of the reasons why uh, you, you went for a presentation of yourself in women's clothing? I don't know. I mean, you've got to remember that when our sexuality evolves, it happens in your childhood. Mm. You know, we don't have sophisticated, rational arguments while we become transvestites or whatever. Mm. They're... They're, they're our unconscious working away, forming our innermost sort of emotional wiring. And so uh, it's not a choice. It's not like, oh, yes, I think this will, this will be a good political choice for later in my life if I wear a dress. It's not like that. But you're a heterosexual man. Mm. Uh, in touch with your feminine side? Well, I'm always sort of dubious of that expression, the feminine side. Well, your know, book doesn't suggest any kind of a feminine side. No, and I think that... You know, men have the same range of emotions as women. It's just that a lot of men are kind of not in touch with them. You know, they're not fully aware of them. They don't have um, a good relationship with them. They're scared of them. You know, men can be incredibly physically brave, but emotionally, a lot of them are cowards. You know, they won't even ask for directions. Mm. Number one rule that males pick mm. up by from their parents, from their peers, is no sissy stuff. That's the number one rule. It's like masculinity has a electric fence around it, and that electric fence is, thou shalt not be sissy. If uh, you and I, as we both bicycle, if I were cycling with you, w would there be something about your behaviour that would depict you as a man? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is one arena, because I used to race uh, as an amateur. So um, I'm a very keen cyclist, and I am quite aggressive, yes, on my bicycle. But the, the traffic is kind of like the last Serengeti for the Western man. Though. It's where they play out some of their most primal masculinities. I'm not perfect. I mean, I say so in the book, you know. I, I, I exhibit most of the traits that I talk about. You know, one of the most interesting things about the book, beyond reading it, is its presentation. Uh, because this very definitely man, Grayson Perry, sits on the cover, and that's not actually an image of you that we've seen that often. I think one of the things about masculinity, and particularly the kind of man in a suit, mm. is that it's kind of invisible, it's a default. Mm. So therefore, to present it in a, in a context, i.e. on me, where it's not expected, mm. it kind of brings home that it's a choice, it's not... Mm. You know, sometimes I think men feel that masculinity and its accoutrements almost grow on their back like a pelt. But you see, I, I wear a suit because I think it kind of normalises me. And, well, I mean, there you go. It's right? not normal, though, is it? Men are oh, freaks. But on the other hand, I wear socks like this because uh, I feel they, they are a statement and a tie like this it's because a it's a statement. statement though, no, it's, a, it's as big a statement as I dare. <laughs> that's what I mean. But that's the whole point, is that men feel that they are the zero longitude of identities, mm -hmm. that they are, they're, 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 they are the normal of other which, by which everything else is judged as abnormal. But, in fact... The white middle class suit wearing man, as Carl Jung, Carl Jung said, you know, normality is, is the perfect aspiration for the unsuccessful.